Jew with jean jacket. You, you, you've heard of a bow tie Shabbat, so now it's jean jacket Shabbat. All right, all right, all right. Settle down. So you know, of course, that uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. I haven't seen the pin that goes with that month, the color. I know that pink is October for our Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I know that November has a red uh, ribbon for Children's Cancer Awareness Month. I know that I, I believe it's March that has uh, Autism Awareness Month. It's got a little puzzle piece. Um, but I haven't yet seen the, the proper attire for mental health awareness. But that doesn't mean it's not important. It means that we ought to focus on the issue. On May 3rd, the New York Times reported that Chris Payton and Sonia Daly emerged from the subway into the brilliant sunshine to meet a client nesting on a pile of blankets near Staten Island Ferry Terminal in Manhattan. It had taken their team almost five months just to track down this 43-year-old woman who was homeless. They were chasing leads uh, from the police and from other homeless people. And on this August afternoon, they were trying to find this woman so that they could get her into what would be referred to as the Holy Grail, an apartment. And the apartment that they found was a special apartment where people with severe mental illness could build a stable life. The woman, referred to as M, flashed them a big smile in her black baseball cap, long, long blonde wig, oversized sunglasses, and about 20 bracelets. She looked like a misplaced movie star. M, who has schizophrenic disorder, immediately began chattering. She said she was doing great, thanks to Mr. Payton. He gave me a million dollar bill in cash. So I'm living off that. Her boyfriend sat beside her, rocking and weaving one gloved hand in constant motion as if conducting an invisible orchestra. Her, visible, her visitors were from a street team of clinicians called an intensive mobile treatment team who deliver a vast array of services, medical, social, material, logistical, spiritual, to some of, the most, some of the city's most vulnerable and, in many cases, volatile residents. In this morning's parsha, it says, V'chi yamuch achicha u'machar me'achuzato u'va go'alo ha'karov elav ve'ga'al et mimkar achiv. If a person a friend, a neighbor, a fellow kinsman finds himself in straits and then is forced to sell off their home. Someone should come to their assistance, says the text. This morning speaks of a person who finds himself in dire straits, a person who is experiencing severe suffering. Ibn Ezra points out that yamuch, the word yamuch, comes from the root which consists of two stem letters that are sounded and one silent letter placed between them. The meaning is that there is sometimes for these people extraordinarily loud and sometimes silent voices that are speaking to them. It means that they are poor and destitute because they find themselves in a moment of extraordinary and extreme suffering. No matter the circumstances that bring about this type of surf suffering, people are suffering. And people today are literally living in cardboard boxes on the street. And then the text goes on again. There are going to be people, again, referred to as the text, Yamuch, who are under extraordinary challenges, being in dire straits. The text says, You should let them live amongst you. But not only that, the text is saying they are already living amongst you. And then finally, one more time. If your person 
if these people are living amongst you, don't subject them to violence. Don't subject them to even greater challenges than they already exist in. The text says in a matter of four verses, three times, it says the same exact phrase, v'chi yamuch. These people are suffering. They've lost everything that they have and they're suffering. The number of ways that we can describe their disheartened life is something that the Midrash already picks up on. In Vayikra Rabbah, it says, Shmona Shemot Ikarula Ani. There are seven, there are eight different ways to describe the suffering that exists in the world that is found within individuals. Different people find themselves homeless for different reasons. Sometimes they find themselves homeless because life has dealt them a set of cards that is unfair. But sometimes they suffer from an illness that drives them to the street because they've lost all money in paying for their health. And some are on the street because they don't conform to the societal norms. And some suffer from mental illness. And so the Midrash goes on to describe eight different ways. Let's just look at three of them for a second. Dach, it says, Miduchachicha ro'ed davar ve'ino ochel. Dach speaks to a type of person who is midu dach, is crushed because he sees things but can't eat. He hears things but he can't really discern what they are. You can imagine an individual who is suffering from some sort of delusions. They see, but they can't eat. They hear, but they can't understand. They see something to drink, but they are still thirsty. And then the Midrash says, Mach, a person who is so low, it's so beaten down. And Chelech, a person who is weak, and so the text says over and over again, your job is to help them out. Your job is to take care of them. When you see these people, don't cross the street, don't run away, but take them closer. You know we have a member of our, not a member of our shul, but a person who lives in our neighborhood. When I met him eight years ago, he would come on a morning minion and stay afterwards, he was unable to speak. He only could write what he wanted to say. And he and I became friendly and we had the opportunity to sit together and Pat, who was our custodian at the time, would bring us breakfast and then we would pack up some food for him and I'd take some money from our tzedakah box and give it to him. And one day I had him come home with me and he, was, he and I are the same size, so he took a shower, I gave him some clothes and he went on his way and I gave him my business card. And then every couple of weeks now for the last eight years, I get a call from the police saying we found Chaim over here, we found Chaim over there. I get calls from people in upstate New York, Chaim's up here with us, all because he hands him my card and we're able to continue to take care of him. Last week in the New York Times, and has continued to evolve over the last couple of days, there was reported of a man named Jordan Needley who died after a man held him in a chokehold. This past Wednesday, the medical examiner explained that he died from that chokehold. Jordan Needley was homeless and had been screaming at a number of passengers on the subway when one Passenger wrapped his arms around Mr. Neely's neck and held him for several minutes until he went limp. The, com the incident comes as the city continues to grapple with how to reduce the crime, 
that people with mental illness actually commit and how we can help them live on the streets while we also recognize that these most vulnerable people, most vulnerable residents also have rights. The two issues have become the twin focuses of Mayor Eric Adams, who has sent more police to patrol the train stations and to sweep the homeless encampments off the street and get them into places in which they are more safe. And then he said that we need a gentler approach to people who are homeless and mentally ill. Those words ring true. We need a gentler approach to people who are homeless and are suffering from mental illness. In November, Mayor Adams announced an 11-point plan to provide care for individuals suffering from mental illness all across New York, and he has implored our governor to enact this 11-point policy, and it has gone on deaf ears. I hope that this is a wake-up call, that Jordan Neely's death is a wake-up call for society to get it right, to address the flaws and the gaps that exist in our system so that we can begin to help those most vulnerable in our society. It will take time to do this and to do it properly. But as I've said on so many issues already in the past, our leadership is smart enough to accomplish it if it can put down its bipartisan behavior. It's enough. Our society is suffering so terribly. And yet we say the solutions are too complicated. There are too many factors that play into the puzzle that will never get it right. I reject that. We're smart enough. We can accomplish whatever we seek to accomplish. And assisting those who are so vulnerable who can't care for themselves, ought to be at the top of our priorities. There's no doubt our society has many challenges. But a Jordan Neely shouldn't be placed in a chokehold because of our fear and our inability to address his needs. We need to do more. So I ask you, next Saturday night, our congregation will once again participate in Midnight Run. And as Jeff has sent out uh, already a number of times, a call for people to participate, either by going on the run itself or by helping prepare food, sandwiches and soup and snacks so that we can in some way address their most base needs of food and shelter. Instead of running away, instead of bringing violence to, our synagogue has decided to provide for those people who are most vulnerable. So I ask you to help, to participate. Go to GHC News or go on our website and sign up to help us provide food, clothing for those who are incredibly insecure. And may we do away with this problem, be may Rabbi Amenu, speedily in our day. Shabbat shalom. We continue with Musaf, page 184. Chatzikadosh, please rise.